we have a special guest star in this episode. Scott Atsit! Both you and Scott have appeared in two episodes of the TV show Monk. Tony Shalhoub was the nicest. He was throwing something to try to get it in the trash can. And when it hit the trash can, it made like a ping wang. And I started laughing. And then the two of us sat there and did our impressions of the noises of things going in the trash can. Like, ping wang, ping wang, ping wang, and we cracked up. I don't know. He, he's just so fun. I just adored him. This episode was filmed during May 2006. And so, Angela, my question for both of us is, what were you doing? Flashback now to May 2006. And what were you up to? Well, I had a journal entry. From May 3rd, 2006, this is what I wrote. I wrote that I was doing a photo shoot with my cat, Lucy, for Cat Fancy Magazine. Angela Kinsey. What? Shut the front door right now. What? Do you know what I wrote in my journal? No. For this week of May. What? Of 2006. I did a photo shoot with Shut my up. cat, Andy, for People Magazine. I'm not joking, what? lady. Lady, how did we not know that I we mean, did photo I shoots mean, I, with our cats at the same I'm, time? Oh, my gosh. First of all, this is why we're BFFs, all right? This is why. Our life has very strange ways that it is parallel. So was Lucy on the cover of Cat Fancy? No, Lucy was not on the cover because she was a rescue. She was not a purebred cat. But also, Jenna, Cat Fancy doesn't let humans on the cover, so... That's like, it's oh. only cats on the cover. <laughs> okay. But the cool thing was, is that Lucy and I got like, I think, I mean, I saved the magazine. I think we got like four pages. So Lucy and I are in the center, I guess for the centerfold. Oh, you are the centerfold of Cat Fancy Magazine. So Lucy and I look amazing. It, they're some of the best pictures I feel like I have. How was she during the photo shoot? Well, yeah, I should probably give you some backstory about Lucy. Lucy loved to sleep. Oh. So uh, Lucy did okay. nothing. Lucy just laid there, and I mean, Lucy is, I love her, She R.I.P. Lucy, she had a great long life, but she um, really just loved to lounge, she was a lounger, oh. so I, in many shots, I'm just laying next to her, because that's like her favorite thing to do, <laughs> <laughs> but what about you, what was your People Magazine shoot like with Andy? Okay, well, Andy was also a rescue, but he was a semi-feral cat. I had uh -huh. found him. He was eating out of a dumpster back in Kirksville, Missouri, where I went to college. I think he was about like five or six months old when I got him. And he was just always a little, we said he was always a little wild. And he uh -huh. loved me and he snuggled me and he was so gentle and sweet, but he didn't love strangers in the house. And yeah. so when the People Magazine guys came over, not only were they all there kind of causing a ruckus, you know, and Andy was a little bit like, I'm out of here. They wanted to do the photo shoot outside and they wanted me to hold him. Forget it. Mine was inside. Oh, oh my gosh. Angela, Forget it. I'm in like full hair and makeup with this dress on. They were like, okay, we're ready for you. Will you come out with Andy? So I'm holding Andy. And I think if you look in the photo, you can see that he and I are both a little tense, but I'm smiling super big as if I'm not <laughs> tense. And I, I wrote in my it. journal, Angela, I wrote in my journal that he clawed my stomach and I had like, like bloody claw marks in my stomach from the photo shoot because he wanted to get away. <laughs> Oh, lady. I I do remember like calling my mom and I was so excited because I hadn't really been in any magazines ever, obviously, in my whole life. And I was like, Mom, I'm gonna be in cat fancy. And my mom was like, What? <laughs> I was like, me and Lucy, mom. Anyway, that is so cute. I love that. Now I really want to see. I remember you doing that, but now I need to see the picture. Okay, well, I have a ton of makeup on, just a ton of makeup, and I'm smiling in a really weird, maniacal way. And um, I called my mom after that photo shoot, Angela, and my mom was so sweet. She was like, oh, I am just so proud of you both. 
just so proud of you both. She's like, just think about that little kitten that you found in that dumpster in Kirksville, Missouri. He drove all the way to Los Angeles with you onto the pages of People magazine. What a life you've given him. That is that is so adorable. That is such a mom moment. Oh, I my know. Lord. I know. Why does Jim do his talking heads in front of the outside facing window while everyone else's talking heads are inside of the window that faces the bullpen of the office? No, that is a great catch. It really is. So I emailed Greg Daniels and I asked him, was this deliberate? Was this an accident? What does he have to say? And he said that it was something that Randall Einhorn, our cinematographer, suggested to Greg, starting with the pilot, and Greg absolutely loved it. He said Randall's intention here was that it didn't necessarily have to be only Jim, but the idea was that any character that had a future outside of Dunder Mifflin or held some sort of internal optimism would sit in front of a window leading out into the world. But characters who didn't want to leave Dunder Mifflin or who maybe were in more of a position of being trapped would do their talking heads facing into the office. Wow. That's so deep. That's really deep. Yeah. I'm I'm sitting here racking my brain to think of my character ever sat on that other wall with the window facing out behind her and the one that comes to my mind, and I think it might be the only one. I'm trying to think if there's any other one. It was when you and I did Big Pregs, Little Pregs. Yeah, we did. That's, I think it's the only time I ever sat there. Well, for a very long time, I only sat there if I was with Jim. Wow. Which was really the only possible future for Pam outside of the office. Wow, I that's think, so deep. You know, ah. Isn't that crazy? But otherwise, she was rather trapped in her, you know, bad decision of being with Roy. Trapped or content, you yeah. know? I mean, some of us were just happy with yes. our lot in life. Yes. Um, well, that is fascinating, and I like it. Yeah, I thought that was a good one. Michael calls Dwight and Jim into the conference room. And he goes through a list of Dwight's complaints. And this is my favorite part of the episode. This is, it's so good. And so one of good. them made me laugh so hard. All right. Here are the list of pranks that Jim has pulled on Dwight that Dwight has reported. Ready? Okay. Yes. Ready, Jenna? Go. Number one. Number one, he replaced all of Dwight's pens and pencils with crayons. Number two, he had everyone call him Dwayne all day, which, by the way, Jenna, <laughs> by the way, guess who would sometimes call him Dwayne who? in a scene? Who? Oscar. He did? For real. We, for real, there were scenes where he'd be like, listen, Dwayne. I'd be like, Dwight, it's Dwight. And he'd be like, ah, crap. That somehow, is so funny. Somehow it went into Oscar's brain in real life. Okay. Well, Jim also placed a bloody glove in Dwight's desk drawer and tried to convince him that he had committed murder. Yes. Uh, number four, Jim told Dwight there was an abandoned infant in the women's room. He went in to save the child and saw Meredith on the can. Go. The next one is um, that every time Dwight typed his name, it would just say diaper. Diapers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. By the end of the day, Dwight complains that his desk was moved two feet closer to the copier. And Jim admits that, yes, every time Jim got up from his desk, he moved it a little closer to the copier. This one is my favorite of all time <laughs> of any prank ever written about on The Office. It's just a sentence. We never see this play out, but my imagination of it is so rich. Dwight says he hit himself in the head with his phone. And Michael is like, what? How could that have been Jim's fault? And then Jim in his it talking cuts head. to Jim, yeah. He, and John's reaction, he laughs. He says that he put nickels in Dwight's headset over the course of a long time so that it got heavier and heavier. And then one day he took them all out <laughs> so that when Dwight answered the phone, it would be super light. Yeah. And Jim, I, I just, that's, that is brilliant. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Greg that Daniels. Is, yeah, 
clap.